Hello, thank you for joining me today. My name is Monifa Carter, and I am a government document, serials, and reference librarian who works at Delaware State University's library. Today, I just wanted to take a few words to speak about the library's databases. If you need to contact me or any of the other reference librarians who are working on these videos, please send us an email at libref at desu.edu. That's L-I-B-R-E-F at desu.edu and we'll be happy to respond to your questions. You can also contact us using the library's chat feature, which is available on its main page in this box over here to the side. Okay. So in an earlier video, you learned about how to use a WorldCat, which is actually a really handy tool when it comes to finding books and journal articles, uh, which is available right here in this search box in the middle of the library's page. But we have other tools that you can also use to find journal articles in particular, and I'm going to take you to one of them. These are called databases, um, and you can actually access a list of them just by clicking on this database list link right here underneath that same search box that we were using in the previous video. And this takes me to an alphabetical listing of all of the databases that the library either owns or provides access to. You see, it's actually a pretty long list. Um, this list is more handy if you already have an idea of the name of the database that you want to go to, because you can just scroll through and find it. Sometimes you can also guess at what the content of those databases are, just based on the title. Um, so looking at this one right here, we have African American Historical Serials is the name of the database. And just looking at this, I can guess that it contains stuff that has to do with African American history uh, and probably serials or newspapers. So I can guess that that might be what's in this database. Now, for those of you who are doing a research paper for, say, an English class, um, or a need to uh, do some research that is interdisciplinary, I would recommend a particular database to you, um, and it's called SAGE. So um, remember that this is an alphabetical listing of all of the databases the library has. So I'm just gonna go to the S's up here. Okay. And please note that there are multiple databases that start with the, the name SAGE. Okay, so this is easy to get really confused on. The one that I want to take you to is Sage Journal's Premier 2019. So I'm just going to click on the title. It's going to open up the side window, and I want to click on the blue link over here to take me to Sage. Okay. And this is really good because um, whenever I'm trying to access the library's electronic stuff, uh, whether that be um, a database or a journal article that I found in WorldCat, I'm going to come across this blue and white page, which is asking me for my library number. Um, and that's going to be on my student ID. Um, for those of you who are distance learners who never really set foot on campus, um, you would want your D number that's specified right here um, to put in rather than your library number. Um, for those of you who do go to school on campus, um, you do want the 14 digit number that is underneath where your signature is on your library or excuse me on your Delaware State University ID. This just should let me straight in. And it does. Um, and this is my landing page. Um, this is basically where I can do a search on any topic that I desire. Okay. Um, and it's basically taken me to a search results page. And I can tell if I have access to something because um, I can look directly at these icons right next to each item, and they tell me whether or not I have something. So if it's blue or green, it means that I actually have access to that journal article. Okay, um, so I can actually like open up any of these by clicking on the PDF icons um, or the little HTML full text icons. 
and it will take me straight to that. Now, if I don't want to go straight away to the entire journal article, um, I can actually click on the abstract, and it will take me to a landing page that has a lot of neat stuff on it. So um, it takes me to where I can find the abstract, which is basically just a summary of the journal article. So if I don't want to read the entire thing to see whether or not it's relevant to the research paper that I'm writing, um, I can look at the abstract and get a sense of it. And if it is something that is relevant, I would then go ahead and read the entire um, document, the entire journal article. Um, there's also a menu over here on the side that will let me actually email this article to myself if I need to come back to it later uh, by clicking on the share button, email. You can just copy that in both places. All right, and I would send that off. Um, it will also generate citations for me if I click on the Cite button. Um, I do want to caution people about this because um, even though it's generated by a machine, sometimes these generations have errors in them. So um, if this is something I want to actually use in my paper, if I want to copy and paste this, and put this on the very end of my research paper in my reference list, I can do that, but it's better to like double check against the reputable source to make sure that the citation is correct. Okay. So this is Sage. Um, there's not actually a whole lot to it. Um, we do have other databases that have a lot more features um, that are a lot more involved than this. Um, this is just to give you a taste using um, some of our multidisciplinary um, content that is available on this database. So um, a lot of our databases are subject specific as well. So we have um, some databases that are just um, containing content that have to do with education, uh, some databases that just have content that have to do with social work, and I know there are a lot of people who are studying specific, um, who are in specific classes that are honed into on one of those disciplines. So I did want to share at least one of our single discipline, dis single discipline databases with you uh, before ending this video. So um, I know we have a lot of education majors out there who have been coming to us for assistance lately. So um, I do want to show you Education Research Complete, which is one of our larger education databases that I would definitely recommend to somebody who was starting out doing research in this, which is featured right here. Okay, and um, I'm just gonna type in a search just to get us started. Um, and while I'm doing this, let's talk a little bit about searching in databases. Because there is a, a craft to it. It's not just like going on Google and typing in whatever and expecting it to like autocorrect for you um, and to draw up even like relevant results that are similar to the thing that you are typing in. Um, you do have to check your own spelling when you're using a database like this. Um, because it won't correct for you. And it might just bring back things that um, you know, aren't even relevant if you make a misspelling, or it will tell you that we don't have anything in our database on that topic if you've misspelled it. So you do have to be careful. Um, I'm also doing a little trick while I'm typing this in. Um, this is what we call Boolean searching. And um, it's basically a very simple command that I'm giving the database. I'm telling it, in this case, to search for journal articles that contain the word children and the term language acquisition, right? And I can actually, like, switch it up. So in this case, I'm telling it to search for journal articles that contain the word children 
or the term language ac a language acquisition. So one or the other, but not necessarily both of them at the same time. And in this case, I'm telling it to search for journal articles that contain the word children, but not language acquisitions. So anything that has language acquisitions in it, uh, even if it also contains the word children, is just going to be dropped right out of my search results so that I don't even see it. So that's a little trick that you can use to save yourself a bit of time. Um, if you forget how to do this, most databases have a help button or a help link somewhere. Um, and using this will take you to a menu with, uh, or, um, you know, a frequently asked questions menu um, that you can use to um, basically recall that information. Okay, so um, when in doubt, you can use that. Or again, you can contact a librarian who will be happy to assist you with your search. Uh, plus, also, please note that I am not typing in really long sentences while I am doing the search. I'm just breaking it up into short, simple keywords, and I'm just stringing them together like this. Okay, so this takes me to my search results. Um, in many cases, um, I can just go down the results list and pull up um, the articles that I'm interested in by going to the PDF links down here. Um, again, if I'm interested in reading about the article rather than the article itself, I could click on the title and it will take me again to another one of those landing pages or record pages that has the abstract of the journal article, um, along with various subject terms or related terms. And clicking on these will actually take me to more journal articles on the same content. So I can use this to do even more searches with very, very little effort, which is great. So like um, in some cases, like on uh, number three on the search results list here, uh, rather than having the little PDF icon or the little um, HTML full text icon, like the one down here, um, I'm getting this strange multicolored link. And um, clicking on this is either going to do one of two things for me. Um, either it's going to take me to another database where I can actually get this journal article if we do have one like that. Um, or it's going to take me to a page where I can do an interlibrary loan request. So I'm just going to click on this and see where it takes me. Okay, so apparently we had this journal article in another database. So when I clicked on that link, it took me straight there. Um, and this is actually the database that we were looking at before, Sage. So if you're doing some um, education research, you might want to check in SAGE too. seems like they have a lot that has to do with education, um, in addition to all other sorts of things as well. But I could just download the article from here um, and save it or print it out or do whatever I wanted with it. Let's go back. I'm going to try it again with this link down here on number seven. And rather than taking me to another database where we actually have the article available, um, it's basically taking me to this page, which is the equivalent of the database saying, uh, you know, sorry, we don't actually have this. Um, but it does give me a link that I can use that will take me to interlibrary loan where I can actually do the request and get the article. So that's fantastic. So if I have a couple of days to spare, I can actually make this request and it will be sent to me electronically, um, since it's an electronic journal article. Um, and then I will have the article to download and to save and print out and to do whatever I want with it. Okay. And that is basically um, all you need to know about getting started with databases. Um, again, if you're not sure about the type or the name of the database that you want to use for the type of research that you're doing, uh, please consult with a librarian by sending us an email. Uh, and there are some other tools available on our website that you can use that will also give you recommendations about databases to use as well. But that can be covered in another video. So again, thank you for joining me today.
Let me close out. And again, if you have any other questions, uh, please email me or the other reference librarians at libref at desu.edu. And again, that's L-I-B-R-E-F at desu.edu. Okay, thank you for your attention, and I hope you guys have a good day.